Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dave Klein, aka Dave Control, and like all of you, I just watched the fantastic Shadow of the Earth Tree trailer. If anything, it just reminded me of how much I missed the lands between. But I digress, let's discuss what we could get out of the trailer. I will at some points be presenting some of my theories, which could be completely wrong, but that's part of the fun of this. The trailer starts with none other than Mikola. If you recall from the base game, Moog, Lord of Blood, was the half-brother to Mikola, and carved Mikola out of the Halig Tree, bringing him to Mogwin Palace and trying to utilize Mikola to create a new dynasty of his own. In game, Moog is an optional boss, and if you defeat him, you can see the cocoon that Moog shared with Mikola. However, there's nothing you can do with it other than acknowledge it's there. This is where the trailer begins, and given the way the DLCs have worked in the past for From Software games, this is where you'll access the DLC through Mikola himself. At the very end of the trailer, we hear VO saying, Come now, touch the withered arm, and travel to the realm of shadow. I will not be far behind. May we meet again. That withered arm, again, likely referring to Mikola. IGN interviewed director Hidetaka Miyazaki about the trailer, and Miyazaki confirmed that this was the entry point to the DLC. It will take you to the land of shadow, which is where the DLC takes place, and you'll be following along the steps of Mikola once you enter. Could it be that the Elden Ring DLC teaser art that was released, which showed Mikola, is perhaps the starting point of his journey and where you two will start the DLC? From the trailer description, it was to this land that Mikola departed, divesting himself of his flesh, his strength, his lineage, of all things golden. When it comes to the land of shadow, Miyazaki says it is a land that is overshadowed by the particular shadow of the Erd Tree, as opposed to the Erd Tree in the lands between, and it takes place again on an entirely separate, physically separate map. In terms of setting and themes, it technically occupies the same space as the lands between, the same universe, but due to something story related that we won't reveal today, this has become physically disconnected and you'll travel to the shadow of the Erd Tree land as a separate place. Something I found especially interesting is Miyazaki goes on to say, Another axis of the story is Queen Merica, and what she did in the Land of Shadows, and what led Mikola to follow her there. In fact, the official description for the video from Bandai Namco says, A place obscured by the Earth Tree, where the goddess Merica first set foot. So if this is where Merica first set foot, would that mean this is where she was born? If so, let's talk about who Merica is. According to Newman's Rune, the Numen are said to have come from outside the lands between, and are in fact of the same stock as Queen Merica herself. So, could it be that the Land of Shadow is where the Numen are from, and a race will regularly be seeing in this DLC? What follows are shots from the Land of Shadow, which, according to Miyazaki, is comparable to, if not larger than, the area of Limgrave from the lands between. It'll also be structured similarly to a normal map in Elden Ring, filled with an open field, large legacy dungeons, and small to medium legacy dungeons. Continuing on, we see the shadow of the Erd Tree. However, it seems to be dripping magma and covered in some sort of ethereal veil. As Quelog and a German spy pointed out in an excellent Twitter chain, this bedding is a baldekin and resembles the veil that drapes the Queen's bedchamber from the base game. Later, we see an audience chamber and an NPC who looks somewhat similar to Renala, Queen of the Full Moon. However, this isn't Renala. What she does look like, again, thanks to Quelog for pointing this one out, is the figure on the Carrion Hourglass. She's also surrounded by Carrion Birdcages, so this is very likely a Carrion Royal of major importance. Later, we see a painting. On this painting is an old man and a woman. Later in the trailer, we see an old man pulling a weapon out of his skull, and to me at least, they very much look like they could be the same person. On top of that, the brooch they're wearing looks identical. A minute in, we see a building that looks like it's deteriorating from the top. Deathroot would seem to have a similar appearance. Also, if you look at the top right, you can see what appears to be roots growing out of the side of the castle. As this is the Land of Shadow, and Merica visited it for some reason, you have to wonder what her goal was and what she brought back. Could this have something to do with Godwin's Rot? I don't know about you, but that's a thread I would like to see explored even deeper. Let's take a break for a second and look back at the original Elden Ring. If you recall Malekith, we learned from the Remembrance of the Black Blade. Malekith was a shadow-bound beast given to his Empyrean. Merica's sole need of her shadow was a vessel to lock away destined death. Even then, she betrayed him. If Malekith is described as shadow-bound, does that perhaps mean that Malekith also came from the Land of Shadow? And continuing this thread and what I discussed above, Malekith specifically had the ability to lock away destined death. 
Could it be then that Merica returned to the Land of Shadow in order to get Malaketh, and this is what Mikola was looking into? And this is how Merica sealed away Destined Death? Next up, the giant flaming cauldron. This is personally my favorite enemy or boss from the trailer, and according to Miyazaki, it's a weapon that was used in a war which occurred specifically in the Land of Shadow. The kindling inside of it is the remains of bodies. After a cool looking worm, we see a beast that notably has omen horns. And I'm not gonna lie, this kind of looks like a corrupted Sarash to me. If you recall, Sarash is Lord of Beasts who became King Godfrey's regent. So to me, this would appear to be a corrupted Sarash, but that could just totally be coincidence. It could also be an omen baby relative of Sarash's, just like how Moog and Morgat were related to the Godwin family. But again, I'm really getting into speculation territory here. I find it interesting that it seems to spew a death mist, which would remind me again of death rot, and also lightning, which is very reminiscent of Godfrey. This creature also has feet, and as my coworker Phil Hornshaw pointed out, it's very reminiscent of the shot emphasizing Morgoth's feet, who notably is also an omen. After my Sarasha lookalike, we get Mesmer, the Impaler, his name confirmed by the pre-order info. Initially, I honestly thought this could be an older Mikola, and I grabbed a side-by-side -side of Mikola's hand and Mesmer's hand, but other than them being lanky, I'm probably just stretching here. For sure though, he's probably either related to the Giants or Radigan. The Giants Red Braid item description tells us, Every giant is red of hair, and Radigan was said to have despised his own red locks. Perhaps that was a curse of their kind. Red-headed characters in the game have so far been one of the two of these things, so that seems like a good guess to me. It's worth noting that his armor also appears to have a drake wing, he's also surrounded by snakes. How very Reichardt of you. We do get the line in the trailer, those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death, in the embrace of Mesmer's flame. So that would seem to indicate an alignment on Mesmer's part with Merica. So perhaps not Mikola, because again, he divested himself of his flesh, his strength, his lineage, of all things golden. Miyazaki states that he has the important element of shadow to him, which is a key theme throughout the DLC. I find it interesting that Mesmer wields flame. We see flames in the game related to either the fire giants, who received the gift from a fell god that Merica supposedly killed, or frenzied flame. On the fell god side, once worshipped by the giants, this evil deity is believed to have been slain by Queen Merica. But the item description of it clearly states it's a one-eyed shield, and Mesmer definitely isn't a cyclops. Or is he? In the close-up of Mesmer, we only see one eye. It's not a cyclops like the shield depicts, but perhaps this is that god, and Merica didn't kill him, but rather sealed him away, and he's now allied with Merica. Obviously, this is heavy speculation, but it's food for thought. It should be noted that his eye is very snake-like, and his crown also seems to depict a snake. The other place we know flame coming from is the Frenzied Flame, which is always yellow in color, and hey, look at that! Mesmer's eyes are yellow. Although, you know, this could be a coincidence, of course. Mesmer is seen on a throne in artwork at the end of the trailer, and this throne is exactly like the thrones the demigods share outside of the Erd Tree. From Miyazaki, this represents the thrones at the base of the Erd Tree, and it's supposed to symbolize that Mesmer stands on equal footing to those other demigods and children of America who sat around in these thrones and held the rooms of the Erd Tree. So he is an important figure who rivals these other demigods, and as you play the DLC, you will learn a little about why he wasn't featured in the Legends of the Erd Tree, the Lands Between. You'll realize why he exists in this shadow, this Land of Shadow. Both Mesmer and my Sirash omens seem to relate to the Primordial Crucible, where all life once blended together. The Crucible of Life is called the Primordial Form of the Erd Tree. However, notably, it was considered the signifier of the divine in ancient times, but is now increasingly disdained as an impurity as civilization has advanced. So it very well could be that we're going to discover a bit more about the relationship between the Primordial Crucible, the Greater Will, and the Erd Tree. Moving forward, there's an alien-looking creature who has a weapon kinda reminiscent of Orphan of Cause from Bloodborne. Therefore, I'm just saying it, Bloodborne and Elden Ring are in the same universe, confirmed. Okay, all joking aside, I think this is probably another alien race who landed on the planet and is trying to influence events, similar to Astel, Natural Born of the Void. Finally, there's this scene at the end with the golden figure and tree. I'm not too sure who the golden figure is, to be honest, but by the look of the hair and the braiding, it's very likely that it's Mikola. My coworker Phil had a theory that it could be Saint Trina. 
Or perhaps that girl in the picture is Saint Trina. Or there are Saint Trina elements somewhere within the DLC. Saint Trina's torch depicts Saint Trina, and from the sword of Saint Trina, Saint Trina is an enigmatic figure. Some say she is a comely young girl, others are sure he is a boy. The only certainty is that their appearance was as sudden as their disappearance. So, could it be that they disappeared to the Land of Shadow? And furthermore, their color is associated with purple. So is the purple butterfly spell in the trailer associated with them? Another interesting connection is that the Clean Rot Knights, those ones you find throughout the Halo Tree and who serve Mikola, dropped St. Trina's Lily. And that's all I've got for you. There were plenty of parts I skipped over where my only general assessment was, yeah, that looks awesome, or cool worm, but I didn't want to dig into surface level observations. Shadow of the Earth Tree releases June 21, 2024, and I, for one, cannot wait.